He keeps himself in trim by bending bars of iron. This bar is the genuine article which we tested before he began to play with it. Beyond the bend. Beyond the bend. All right, Todd Gardner, welcome to the show. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. All right. First question I ask all my guests is, tell me about the first time you saw someone bend a piece of steel. That's interesting. I was, uh, I, I came to this not as a, a strength person, not as a, a, you know, quote unquote gym rat or a CrossFit person, but I was a, I was and still a, a sideshow performer. And I was at the uh, Southern Sideshow Hootenanny where I saw Luella Lynn uh, roll a frying pan. And it was kind of one of those where it was like, I saw it. I'm pretty sure I saw what I just saw, but I, I need to, I need to find out more about this. And, uh, <laughs> and then watched her act where she opened up a horseshoe and you know, had a, a, a flat bar, uh, you know, 48 inch flat bar kind of thing. And it was like, yeah, I need to, I need to find out more about this. And uh, got to talking with her. And then she uh, in turn introduced me to her coach. Now my coach as well, uh, Hercules or Chris Ryder. I'm sure, right name, I'm sure his name has come up many times in your uh, in your podcast or others that certainly know who, who he is because he's been in the game for a while. Um, oh, definitely. That's, yeah, that's that's where I started um, was was seeing it on stage somewhere. And, and it's like, yeah, that that's what I need in my life. Nice. And how long ago was that? Three years or so. Uh, roughly, oh, OK. Roughly three years. Uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting because where we find ourselves in, in the world right now in terms of COVID. Um, I would generally speaking just be getting back from New Orleans from that from that convention. Uh, nice. And uh, you know, I'd gone the last three or four years, and now it's kind of like seeing the memories. You know, like the the Facebook memories or the like. You were doing this, and it's like, yeah, I was in New Orleans, and that was really awesome. That was that time that I could actually leave my house. <laughs> yep. Oh, I totally relate. Just this weekend, uh, I, a memory popped up for me, and uh, last year this time I was. Uh, grappling in a tournament and i you know i haven't done any of that in a whole year oh, and sure. it's just like yeah. was this like crazy. A or was it a different kind of uh or is it something related or uh jujitsu i'm a jujitsu okay. guy that's my my background and cool. that found right. grip training through that and then bending in the old time feats uh through right. the grip grip world um so what what were you doing performance wise before you saw the the strength feats Right. Uh, I was doing uh, more like classic uh, side show feats, like a, a human blockhead, uh, you know, where you take a 16 penny nail and or so, or, you know, various people do different things, but you actually take a hammer and you knock it into your nose or you uh, do a bed of nails, uh, where you lay on a bed of nails. And I was actually doing a bed of nails bench press lift where somebody would step up on my chest and then I had a board and I would push that board up. Uh, and then bring them back down which is which is tricky i mean that's a lot of dynamic weight moving around and i yeah. would have them like they would put their hand on like another person's shoulder so that they would at least be balanced but they weren't like clearly they weren't leaning all that weight right like it was just a, a balance thing and do that um although it's funny once i started doing more strength work i actually stopped doing that act as much and it was no real reason but it was just one of those funny uh, oh that's funny yeah, plenty of evolutions of things, but uh, but yeah, I was doing that and like escaping from uh, straight jackets and uh, you know uh, a lot of those kinds of of old time sideshow feats, um, which was yeah, I mean, I, pretty interesting stuff and pretty interesting to sort of figure out how you know how to make that enjoyable or how to make that presentable to an audience. Uh, another thing I've been working on is a sword swallowing, which is a whole other Okay. Discipline, you know, and so it's like a lot of a lot of that kind of uh, you know, why are you doing this to yourself, dear God? Why? I, but I can't look away at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do, are you familiar with a, a guy named Alex Megala? I think is his name. Uh, he's a sword, sword swallower from the West Coast. But the reason I know him is he's a really, really good grappler. He he okay. trains for um, Eddie Bravo, and I think he might be like a contortionist or something too, because he's like got this crazy flexibility. But right. he does all that kind of stuff. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I as far as flexibility, I mean, I I was more flexible in my youth. Uh, 
I mean, I took Taekwondo, so it's like hearing jujitsu and like, and it's, it's interesting to, to uh, like sort of, uh, there's a lot of us that I would imagine come from a martial arts training. Um, I mean, that, that kind of is the, the code, right? Like you, like how we function. It's like, are you better than you were yesterday? Then, then, then you're doing well, you know? Yeah. Um, it's not, can you beat that person? It's like, can you work on your mindset to beat your mind? And then, yeah. and so like, and that's sort of one of the, one of the appealing things I found about bending, but it's like a lot of that discipline or uh, mental fortitude or, or even perseverance is definitely found in martial arts stuff. But Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And a reason why I, you know, from personally speaking, from the outside looking in, you know, my grappling friends are probably like, well, you know, why is Cody like wasting his time bending a nail or rolling a frying pan or something like that? They probably see no connection because they don't know the history, right? So right. I think the fact that all of this in my mind is connected because yes. the old time performing strongman generally was a grappler or right. a lot of times was, right? And then they also were like a weightlifter. I just, I love the fact that the old time strongmen were all of these things, you know? So it is very right. much at the root connected. Right. I mean, I, there's, there's something in terms of performance that, and performance, uh, like different things that I do, right? Like I don't, I don't look at the straight jacket or the uh, bending a 60 penny nail on stage or doing axe levering or, you know, laying on a bed of nails and all that. I, I don't look at them as, as like wildly different things. I look at them all as um, the way that you tell a story. Uh, and they're like, the, they're the vocabulary you use to tell a story. And, yeah. You know, it, it's like, you know, like your, your work experiences or your grappling experiences, they're not mine but I'm fascinated by yours. And so if you can sort of tell them or show them, and these are the things that come up, then it's like you, you've connected in a way, right? And, and right. sometimes showing what's going on is much easier than explaining it. And so that becomes a bit of like the picture vocabulary, the, you know, a lot of it, it all connects, I think. And it's all very, like you said, with, with them being wearing many hats and doing all of the things, you know, I think that's that was their vocabulary. You know, they could wrestle. And, you know, it's like maybe they could bring a couple wrestling moves into like the idea of like, I'm going to look at this nail. No, I didn't get it. Okay, I'm going to go off the top rope and jump on this nail, and, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and amp up the showmanship because they're used to it in the wrestling. They're used to it in this, right? So it's, totally. it becomes different ways of presenting the, the, the thing. Yeah. I, I have to tell you, like the story aspect to you performers was something I was totally missing, right? Like I have to right. be totally honest because as I got into this and I saw pe what people were up to mm -hmm. and I, I, I made some progress myself, I was like, what's up with these dudes just bending 60 Ds on stage? Like, that's not right. that hard. There's like right. guys in, right. the, in their shed doing like 10 times harder stuff. And then when I spoke to Mighty Mike and I spoke to some other guys and now I understand like the craft of the show, you know, it's like a whole different thing. It's not just like about, oh, I'm way stronger than you. Like, so right. what? Like, it's right. like this. Right the message and all of that and that that made me like respect it so much more and made me that much more like fascinated to what you guys are doing i mean one of the things one of the bits i'll do um and it's like during this pandemic and do i've been doing the COVID 19 papers and they've been you know strength acts but or sideshow acts that incorporate like what you're talking about the presentation i mean one is super simple it's like i'm i'm drumming my fingers you know and it's like i'm bored you know, and, and I've got, and I usually use a text panel that it's almost like the old silent movies where and it's yeah. like, that, that's the other character, right? So it's like, I'm bored. And it's like, well, do you have a deck of cards you could play solitaire? And I was like, it's an excellent idea. So I take a deck of cards and I start to put the cards out on the table, one, two, three, four, five. And I, I don't even get to the fifth card because the table's too small. Well, then it dawns on me if I actually rip the deck of cards lengthwise. Yeah, the vertical tear. Well, then they're half as wide, so then I can get all of them on the table. <laughs> Done, right? So that's and it's the simplest thing, but people can relate because they've, I mean, pardon the fun, but they've dealt with cards before and they, right? They know what that shape is and they understand, like, oh, there, there wasn't enough room. So, you know, oh, that's cool. So it's like it, it just, it's a. It, that's what I mean by vocabulary. It's like, oh, right, it's a strength thing, but it wasn't like watch me do strong thing. It was. It was necessary to the task. Yeah, and, yeah, and that's in, neat. In an unconventional way, right? Like, that's a weird problem to have, 
with an even weirder solution, right? Yeah. Like just get yeah. the table, like that. That's what you do. That's what most right. people do. Or play it on the floor. Or, but no, no. Or you could, you know, just rip the cards and go that way. Yeah, you could do yeah. that. Yeah. Totally. I can relate to some extent because, like, I grew up playing in bands. You know, like mostly like punk and, and hardcore yeah, yeah. bands as a as a teen and a young twenties and whatnot. Yeah. And you know, planning out the set list was like a thing, right? So we'd have to be like oh all right like this one's gonna get it like the crowd to be real crazy and like you know yeah, we would think yeah. about the presentation in a way and that's like kind of i can relate to like planning out that the card right. feed I mean, in a way every, every you know i mean I've, i'm of an age where it was like a mixtape was a well-crafted thing it wasn't like you could yeah somebody, you know it's like here's my spotify playlist you know like you can yeah. do that but it was like you know like you had to know like okay well this not only is like this one is going to bring the emotion up and then this one's going to bring it back down. And then you had to also be realized like, wait, okay, I've only got 45 minutes on this side of the tape. How am I going to, yeah. how am I going to squeeze that one? You know? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Mixed tape. That's great, man. <laughs> um, all right. So you saw your, um, your friend that was doing the performance, the strike stuff. Yes. So tell me about your first introduction to actually trying some of this stuff. What was that like? Sure. So I, I got in touch with, uh, with, uh, with Chris Ryder, and um, I said, "Hey, I'm interested in doing this." And he says, "Okay, um, then let's let's do it." Uh, and so, you know, there was a I, I went and met him in a, there was like in a coffee shop, and like I, I live in Baltimore, he's in Pennsylvania, so okay, it's it's reasonable enough drive. Like I, I could yeah. be out there, and so we met in this coffee shop, and there was like a deck of cards here, and just you know, a horseshoe there, and a couple of things, and. And it was just a matter of like, you know, we went to the back room of the coffee shop and, you know, I left with sore hands and like blisters and, and all that. And, and, you know, I guess he'd gone to the coffee shop enough that no one thought much about it, but it was, it was cool. Um, the first time I ever did a, the, the nail drive, right, the, um, was out in the, the, like outside of the coffee shop in this like little certain like town circle, you know, oh, like, right. and, and it was just kind of like. Okay, yeah, this is this is how I'm spending my afternoon. This is great, <laughs> uh, and uh, but yeah, uh, I mean and that's and that's actually been really uh, solid. It's like you know you meet certain people and it's just like you uh, we 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 get each other and and, and Chris and I yeah. are both you know like unabashed like cat dads like for the first I mean I had a roommate that had cats so like when we would do the Skype lessons kind of like this it was it yeah. was like here's this cat okay here's this cat. <laughs> okay, here's this cat, you know, silly stuff. And then, uh, and I was like, okay, cats are cool, but we got to get to the work, you know, and, and do that. Sort yeah. of thing. So, so we just got along famously. But, uh, but yeah, that was my first experience in doing it. And it was, it was, um, it was addictive, right? I mean, I think, I think you can identify with that. It's like, sure. right, uh, you know, there's the idea of like, like right now I'm kind of working on, on grade eight, uh, eight inch bolts, trying to get to that point. And it's like, they're, kinking a little bit they're bending a little bit and yeah. it's like you know with he and i it's like well if it bleeds we know we can kill it right and the, <laughs> that's that's the you know the foothold that you get into or i was doing a a, a, a whole stretch of uh pro fits pro fit 60 uh 60 penny six inch nails okay yeah um, and those are those are not nice those are not yeah you know those are <laughs> those are those are stout uh yeah but it was like you know, the day that I finally, because like I would get, sometimes I would get them, sometimes I wouldn't. And so we did the thing where it's like you work backwards, like you bend it to 90, then you bend it yeah. to 100, then you bend it to 110. And then all of a sudden, you know, that 170 to 180 bend doesn't seem as like it's a big deal. But 180 straight and you've done it, right? You've done the thing. Yeah. So, but yeah, so it, that it was, that yeah, my first, you know, at first blush, it was like, oh, well, this is hard, but I like it. I like that it's hard. I like that. I feel like I've accomplished a thing when I've done the thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. I look back at like some of the stuff I've kept and it's like, Oh, cool. I've got my quarter inch carriage bolts just hanging up there thinking that those are hard, but at the time they were, you know, and that's like right. a reminder, like everything, everything becomes carriage bolts. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I was saying to a friend of mine, um, just like messaging with him a bit that it's like the biggest takeaway from this stuff for me, I think was not, necessarily some dramatic jump in strength but definitely a dramatic change in my mindset because it was like and it's, I don't think it's like 
you know, I'm unlocking this like deep strength or I, I don't know how much I think of all that. Like certainly the mind has a governor, right? And it's like, yes. at, at, and I know people kind of go hard with all of this, but, and I, but I definitely know that like prior to whenever I started like May or, or something like that, if you handed me a nail, even if it was the easiest, a, a, a timber tie, the one of the twist ones yeah, that are yeah, su yeah. super easy, right? And like showed me how to do it. I don't know if I could have done it, to be honest, because I just yeah. didn't, I just, I hadn't ever seen anyone do it. So that's part of the picture right. I feel like is like, you see someone do it, then it's like, oh, okay. And I see that day to day, like the, on David Horn's Steel Shredder page, like people do something that pushes the bar and then it's like four more people do it. Boom. Now the bar is raised. And then yeah. another person. Yeah. And it's yeah. like amazing what just having it out there does. It's, it's, sure. it's totally like blows me away. Like how the level gets raised just by that first person doing it to something that was thought of as like undoable before. Right. But right. I mean, it's like how many people run the four minute mile or do the, what is it, the Fosbury flop, I believe, in like high jump? Where uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> so, so basically, you know, like where you would do the, the pole vaulting. Or like the high, or like the high jump, but there was yeah. a guy that did it in a very different way. Like most people were like diving over the, like yeah. over the bar, and he managed to like throw his legs up, oh, okay, and kick it over, and it was it became known as the Fosbury flop, and it somehow was more efficient, wow. or right. like better power transfer or something, and so everyone like that became the thing. There's right. a I wish I remembered his name, but there's a and it, it's fascinating and and it's easy enough to find. It's easy enough to okay. Get. But there was an Australian guy, um, well into his like 50s, I think, that didn't know any better and entered this road race that was like one of these ultra marathon things. And he wow. explained that like his parents had like two to three thousand acres and, and they were they were uh, ranchers, right? And so he'd have to go and get all these sheep and he'd have to like run around and find them and bring them back and that sort of thing. So he was running all his life. Yeah. So the ultra marathon where it was like 500 miles or something ridiculous that, you know, and he won, which, you know, they were intrigued by because it was an old guy and he didn't have running shoes. He had work boots <laughs> and he, you know, and it was kind of like, he wasn't running as much as he was just kind of like very efficiently moving yeah. along. But the thing that no one told him was that generally speaking, the athletes would sleep during the thing and he didn't, he just kept moving. Oh, wow. And right. so like, he finished like a day early, like shattered the record. And now everyone has to like, everyone, no one sleeps anymore. You know? Exactly. And, yeah. Yeah. Look up Australian road race. Uh, oh, cool. And like old guy winning like Australian marathon or something, you know, it's, it's oh, wow. Google, but it's a really, but it's exactly that thing, right? Like, Hey, well, here's someone who just, it occurred to them that they could do the thing. Yeah. And over in all season, it's like, well, wait, if he does it, I can do that. Or if she does, if I can do that or, right. Hmm, you know, and then, yeah, I mean, it's, that, that part is really interesting. I mean, I look at a lot of, you know, I look at your pages and I look at uh, some of the others and, and it's like, I'm not at that level, but it gets me thinking. Right, right. And it's, yeah. I also think, so you have the component of seeing someone else do it, right? And that's that sort of like levels you up in a, in a way. And then you have your own experience. Like the first time I did bend, uh, we'll just use the 60D for the, the reference point or whatever, is like, okay, that actually worked, you know? like, yeah. like yeah. I possess the capability to do that. So it's like, now, you know, I'm taking that same attitude to like, whatever I'm doing, you know, like for, for the most part, strength related. I don't know if I'm taking this mindset and like venturing out to other things, but maybe I will. Uh, I mean, but, I think so. I mean, in a way, not to, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I think no, that no. if you, you know, um, I'm not sure when you hit record, but talking about your podcasts, then and now yeah right? like you 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 did it you had the wherewithal you've seen others you've heard others and then you like, right. well, do this and then they continue to get better so yeah, it, that's in, a good in, example in, in no small way i think you're you're applying that mindset like okay i i did it, it wasn't the cleanest it may have taken eight hits as opposed to four hits that it takes now or whatever it is but like you've got this you know you've got these podcasts a well-oiled machine and it's that same i'll just chip away at it and get better at it and it's yeah the same, it's the same mindset that's cool. Yeah, that, I haven't thought about that. But yeah, that makes sense. So it's like, yeah, so it's like, that's the I was getting back to what I was saying to my friend, it was like, the biggest takeaway for me, is just like, the mindset that it was like, I, 
may be able to do this. <laughs> you know, right. like right. you know, I, I snapped this big bolt recently, and it was like awesome. the the guy was like my friend. It's like I can't even believe you can bend that thing, and I was like, yeah, a year ago I probably I wouldn't have been able to you know it's like right. and it's and not did, because that, I've just made all oh good that, not because I just made all these gains you know it's like right. there's a major mental component to the to, to the stuff that we're talking about there, then there is and it's it's uh the mighty Adam um had once said you know there was something like was I is there anything intrinsic about the the nail that it doesn't want to be bent and the answer is no is there anything going on in my life that would prevent me from making this bend? Well, that answer is no. So then I guess I'm going to bend this nail, right? Like <laughs> it, just a checklist. Is there is is the nails? It was something like, is the nail's desire to not bend stronger than my desire to bend it? Yeah. The, the, well, no, because the nail doesn't have any right. desire one way or the other. It, it's a nail, so like that's an easy one. Um, I do remember in a show. Um, I happen to have this here, but it was kind of a funny thing where. We had a photographer and it was like, you know, thinking of the nail as like having a having a, a being or having a spirit. I was getting ready to do a bend and the photographer looked up at their camera. I was like, I'm sorry, this is the better side. This is this is clearly the better side of the nail. And we're like, <laughs> okay, you know, but yeah. but yeah, I mean, we do get to think about those things, right? In terms of, you know, like I, I don't think anyone but vendors have given um, as much like angst you know, assigned angst or personality to the things we're bending. You know, like no one's looking at, at uh, you know, uh, like we'll just use it, a 60 penny nail when you can't bend it. It's like, it's that thing. It's a thing that looms in my mind. It's the thing I, I keep one in my pocket because I just want to feel that thing and get used to bending it. And then yeah. I'm like, are you nuts? Like that's the name. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So you said you're uh, making some headway on a grade eight. Is that yeah. just for personal reasons to well, like? What, uh, I, what I'm what I'm gunning for. Uh, this is this is one of those like uh, like rest stop on the way to wherever kind of things. Okay. Like, I, yeah. You know, it's like okay. Well, if we get to like I live in Baltimore, really, so if I get to I don't know Georgia today, or if I get to North Carolina today to go down to Florida, then it's a good day of driving. Like I, that's a good stop, right? Um, and the, and, 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 and I assume it's the same for you. Like in our case, we don't know, we don't have any real sense of where, what the end will be. Cause if we do, then, then we'll reach it and then we're done. Yeah. You know, like, like you said, a year ago, you couldn't bend this. So what's ahead for next year? Well, we'll see. It's, that's, that's right. it. Um, but I really want to get to the red name. I really want to okay. have my name on that list. I, I want the t-shirt. I want the, yeah. I want that experience of going into a place and then opening the package and it's like, here, pick one of these, and then you do the thing. Like I, I want right. that, that sort of, uh, I don't know if it's pageantry, but I just want that kind of like importance about a thing, you know, and yeah. experience. Uh, and that's a good one. I think that's a good one, a good cert to have in your pocket. Like I've done the red nail, you know, and yep. people in this in this community are like, okay, all right then. Like that means you you put in some work, you know. Right. You know, uh, so you got to check out Harito Bolts. That's uh, my sponsor. And and uh, if when you do order, make sure you use uh, promo code Cheers, which will get you ten percent, and that'll uh, kick some kick some money back to support the show. And uh, you're gonna want to save some because shipping here to the states is is a little wicked. But um, there's a lot. Harito. So are, yep, Harito bending. Bending and Cheers. Promo code Cheers. Yeah. Got it. So. There's going to be a lot of nice stepping stones right there. The 4.8 is the beginner, and that's like somewhere in between, probably a grade five and a grade eight, I'd say. Okay. But it's but it's five sixteenths by seven, so it's the size of a red nail, which right. Is, right. feels cool. And then um, the A4, which is the step above, right. that's like get getting closer. That's between like a grade eight and a red nail, I'd say. And then the A2 is basically on par with a red nail. Um, but it's stainless, so it's a little bit different bend, uh, a little tougher to complete. Um, but those are really good, and I, I, they're very, very, very consistent. So you and everybody out there should be ordering from Horito. Don't forget the promo code. <laughs> right. Nice nice way of plugging. I, I enjoyed that segue where it's helpful. And, you know, and then, like, in the, in the showbiz world, all of a sudden it would be like, we're doing this. And don't forget your Horito boats, kids. Right. <laughs> Back to the interview. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so good. that's got to be just personal reasons that you want that red nail then, right? Because like the people in the show don't 
there's no difference care. between yeah, a red nail and a right and i think i think that's the case in most things right like you were saying you, you're a musician like there are certain songs that you played and you and you wrote or that that like had everything to do with like personal style but it wasn't like before the song you're like okay if you turn to the page six in the primer that we gave you <laughs> these are every personal thing that was about this song right like, yeah if it's good music it's good music and people aren't necessarily aren't necessarily going to be in on the conversation that that made it or in on the the, the motivation um, right I think for that it's like that that is a you know that is a very tangible you know uh level you know it's like doing the red nail means like i have put in a good amount of work and then that that it's like it's a good platform to then go from go to anywhere else that i want to go to in terms of bending i mean i'm you know and i think we, we talked a little bit about it, like the performer versus the, you know, the, the, I want as many certs as I, and I want as many yeah. accolades in that regard. Like I, uh, and this almost sounds defeatist in a way, like I know I'm not going to be the strongest person out there. And I'm, I'm totally fine with that. You know, but who can say that? I mean, right, really? who can say that? But I mean, like, yes, I mean, you can look at the mountain, you know, and like, you yeah, sure. The, right. And it's like, well, I'm not going to be that dude. I, yeah. I, I don't really have an interest in being that dude. So, yeah. Which is also very freeing, though, right? Like, if you take that off the table, like I don't have to be the strongest out there. Well, then, what do you, what, how do you feel about this? Like, what do you, what are you wanting to do with it? Um, and like what I was talking about with the cards, or or doing some of these other, um, you know, the chest belt um, chain break, or right. uh, the arm shackles, or the wrist shackles. You know, I've done a thing where it's like I'll snap one of those, and I'll sit and like look around, and I'll flip one of the pieces, and I'll drop it in an envelope. And I have a box of 10 of them, and now it's a chain letter, right? Like, I'm pretty excited to send a chain letter, you know? Um, and to me, like, to, like, have those stories or twists or turns, like, that's who I am anyway. And this is just adds to it. And and cool. and it's, like, to do the things and do them convincingly is how eloquently you tell the story. Right? Yeah, right. And it doesn't yeah. matter how cool the song is or how beautiful it is. If you, if you can't play the chords and the voice is scratchy and, and even in a punk band, like, there's bad punk out there. You, you oh no doubt you know when you hear it it's not going to matter so if you can tell your story well and it's what you're like what we're saying like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna blow through a whole bunch of red nails on stage and no one's gonna be impressed they'll be just as impressed with the 60. right right it's just a piece of metal that's bending and they're like whoa you know <laughs> and they're gonna be impressed I'm, with the wrench that's bending because they yeah. use the wrench you know right i'm sitting here thinking that if you start busting out red nails on stage that's like when the band wants to play their brand new stuff that they only care about and the fans yes, don't exactly right yeah that's a really good way of saying it yeah yeah and then we're like hmm do the cards yeah. thing again do the cards Fine, I'll exactly with the cards yeah right right yeah. so what's your uh week to week training looking like uh in pursuit yeah. of the g8 and the red now so um so what i've got is i've, I've kind of made myself a, a table you know and every day it's like i use grippers um to you know like 300 pound 350 pound grippers to like close and yeah. hold, close and hold so that so that you know the 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 finger pull across your palm the back of your hands right that's getting right. stronger and that helps um i've been um and just you know just if you want to bend the thing, then then bend the thing, right? Like, I, right. So I'm working on uh, right now. I'm doing, still doing a lot of the pro fits and grade fives, um, uh -huh. and it's funny how that changes too, right? Like the grade fives used to seven inch grade fives used to be like driving nuts because it was like <laughs> widening that, you know, that space, and then yeah. the eight inch, it's like you know dialing that in can be can be a thing. Definitely. It used to be too. Like it was always here for me. I was like, yeah. what do you, mean you can go here. What do you mean? What, what, yeah, you know, and like now you can, now I can just fall into position. Like that's a, a subtle change, but, but yeah, so I'll do the grippers, do, you know, some reps of the grippers. Uh, I'll do some, uh, you know, grade five or, or alternating days of grade fives and pro fits and, and just, just keep at it. Um, you know, and then I think I'll take a, you know, every couple months or so, or I'll take a, a week off just to let the, the hands like yeah. stop freaking out, you know. It's like sure, yeah. pen and write things again. <laughs> yeah. <You know>? yeah. <laughs> but, but that's that's generally it. Um, I'm trying to. There, I'm looking into doing some other things to ramp it up, like some uh, kettlebell squats and and different things. Because if you want to get stronger, apparently the secret squats. Like, yeah, but no, I want to get this kind of stronger. Cool. Do squats. No, no, no. But yeah. I want to do, yeah. All right. Do squats. Right. So, yeah. 
So I guess I got to do the squats. Um, yeah, definitely. How about uh, other strength stuff that you're doing during the week? Uh, anything these days, or just mostly the uh, bending? I mean, that, there's that, and then I've been I've been maintaining. Um, well, we'll go back. One of the things that I did a couple of years ago, which I think was super helpful, was I did a, a, a video series called 365 Days of Strength. And these, like, I would put on up on Instagram. Uh, the under my stage name, Hot Todd Lincoln. This is again, let me turn and tell the crowd. Uh, but Hot Todd Lincoln, and my tagline is the old Jewish man trapped in the old Jewish body. That's that's what it, where it's at. But uh, the uh, I would do a, uh, every day. I would do a video, and it was like it, the rule was it had to be done that day, like done and and put out that day. Uh, and and it was yeah it was it was a trick because some days like I was traveling or some days like I was at an event so all of a sudden I like I brought stuff with me like I was at a baseball game at one point and like managed to like bring in a bolt and then all of a sudden bend the bolt and like <laughs> had a friend film me because I had to do the thing that day yeah uh, but uh, but yeah that was that was really cool because it it forced me into like you uh, like from a performance standpoint like they're not all going to be gold right. And right. I, think, I think also like from a, a bender standpoint or, you know, old time strength standpoint, like every bend, every lift, everything is not going to be a personal best. There's going to be some days where you feel like you backtracked or you lost ground on yeah. something. But the thing is the, the doing of it, continually doing it is where, is where the strength lives. Um, sure. And so like the first one, like you said, like the, you know, like, please don't look at my first podcast. Don't <laughs> yeah. like my first strength video was like rolling a, a frying pan in like 10 seconds and it was like it was a 10 second video like you started and it was over and there was no nothing about it whereas now it's like oh well there's a bug on the table let me oh here we go i'll just use this pan roll it up <laughs> ting, 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 and then just off the pan and that's yeah you know that's where it works but um but then so i finished that and it's funny because i was like all right i've done this whole thing for a year from january 7th to january 7th and that was um that was a lot like and i finished in 2000 20 right and then i was like whew i'm not gonna make any more videos for a while that was a lot yeah <laughs> and all of a sudden march rolls around and it's like well we have these couple weeks where we'll probably be in our homes and right and things will go back to normal and i was like all right you know what i'll do some black and white old school things where i think the first one i started off and i had the the, the plague mask and walked in and did a did a kind of a creepy thing and then uh you know like ripped a deck of cards or something and then uh you know 118 19 videos later <laughs> we we still find ourselves like in our homes and yeah right. so like that's the that's work too right like you have to do the feet and do it in a way that you're not that like looks convincing or it looks like you yeah can, you can do the thing so that's been that's what i've been doing to keep busy both nice. physically busily and mentally busy right to, right like, right like, make this thing and okay this will be really cool and i you know it's like oh this one really cracks me up or um <laughs> there was one i i took a a you know, 11 inch flat bar, 11 inch by half inch, quarter inch uh, flat bar. And uh, this model friend of mine was very hotsy totsy, like walked across and I was like waving and didn't give me the time of day. So I <laughs> bent the thing and, you know, so it looks like a, looks like a, a magnet at that point. And, I okay. it, and then all of a sudden she like comes back oh, nice. <laughs> and all of a sudden she's against the thing and like, oh, what happened? Oh, hi. You know, and then the, the text panel was like, wait, what, what happened? And it's like, well, I made a chick magnet it's uh, <laughs> you know it's dumb but it, it like delighted yeah. me to, to to make those things and it's you know, yeah to put those together yeah. and spent way too much time like trying to make the little stream of electricity actually like flow the right way and not like <laughs> i'm holding it here and then the bolts up here kind of thing yep. but, gotcha. yeah yeah uh, yeah but yeah oh, there that's but yeah it's been uh it's been i think that that helps on both fronts right it helps on the strength front to keep going and it helps on the mental front because it's like how am I thinking about the things that I'm doing? Like, how can I apply them? Or how can I use this to, uh, you know, like one of the things I want to do, I just started doing the, like across the bridge of the nose, half inch okay. running, uh, yeah. which is pretty much like being hit in the face with a volleyball, right? <laughs> like that pain level is like, right? And I know that going in. And so it's like, all right, if I do one of those a week or something, like I'm just going to have like a permanently achy nose i got it um, <laughs> but it's like i kind of want to figure out a way of like making that into a coat hanger or something where it's like i bend it across and then just put my jacket on that instead of the side or, yeah so it's like yeah. it, it's not it's again because my mindset is like 
the thing is impressive, but it's even more impressive if it just kind of flows into a story or into a narrative. Yeah, I like that. It definitely seems like you're putting a lot of thought into it. Um, what what was it like when you were first starting to add the strength stuff into the show? And, and for how long were you doing like the uh, the other stuff, that, the sideshow stuff yeah, you were doing right. so before that? Stuff, um, I was doing for like a couple of years. Um, I mean, everything is kind of like, it's been like pulling a thread out of the sweater and then all of a sudden it would be a big ball of yarn, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, I started doing the 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 burlesque shows because someone like you know you remember um what was it called um like you check in all the time foursquare like you check into a place and you become mayor of the place it was like an online like a social media I think so. yeah but then i became mayor of this place where they had these variety shows so they it was changing into something else and so they asked me to say a few words and so i said a few words and someone's like you need to be the host of our troupe and i was like oh, okay so i did that and then as I was hosting, I was like, you know, it'd be really nice if like someone's like costume falls apart before they hit the stage or someone's music isn't starting, but I could have some things on me to do, you know? And so I was okay. starting to do like the, the, the blockhead or the bed of nails or things, or, you know, just to have in my pocket. And then I started getting interested in that and then, and then seeing the strength stuff. Like, so it's just all kind of been gotcha. building in that way. But the, when I first started incorporating the strength stuff, I mean, I think a lot of it was definitely the, you know, here's this horseshoe. I'm going to bend it into a heart, right? Uh, and it's like, you know, until I figured out what I wanted to say about it. Um, where where do you live, actually? Where's where? I'm in uh, upstate New York, like two hours yeah. north of the city. Gotcha, gotcha. So, uh, being in Baltimore, there's a, there's a thing I do with a horseshoe that that still makes people rumbly. Um, but I grew up in Indianapolis. And I was like, so when I was 12 or 13 year old, 12 or 13, I uh, woke up and we had a football team. We had the Indianapolis Colts and yeah. uh, that was really cool. And I said, you know, uh, and so I got hold of the horseshoe and that makes me think of the fact that we had the Colts, right? It's an obvious thing. And then I was like, you know, the old, like the old uh, thing, like what do April showers bring? They bring Mayflowers, right? April showers right. bring Mayflowers. And what do Mayflowers bring? They bring the Colts in the middle of the night from Baltimore because it was Mayflowers <laughs> cooking. And everyone okay. in Baltimore remembers, like Pepper, Pepperidge Farms remembers, and Baltimore remembers Mayflower trucking, right? And so <laughs> I'm like, you know, but look, you guys won more Super Bowls than the Colts have, and and you know what? I'm I'm coming around. In fact, let me show you, and then I'll bend the horseshoe around and make it hard. It's like, yeah, I love our Ravens just as much as you do. It's, it's oh, cool. nice. So it's like it's you know for a certain crowd, like it works out, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. But uh, but yeah, so I I started to try to figure out ways of making that work, where the nail drive became like have a you know, sort of an old style circus banner that I'm trying to hang up and it's not staying on my, on my little table. Right. Yeah. It's like, Oh, but I have this nail and the hammer would be nice, but oh well. And I'm dab my head with a washcloth and Hey, you know, and I, I drive <laughs> it in, but I'm, I, but it's all under the guise of like, I'm going to do this really cool balloon trick. It's going to be great. Okay. But I'm looking for a spot <laughs> to put the balloon. So I like put that there so that I can hang the banner. I was like, wait, wait, because there's the, and it's like, no, I got this. And I drive the nail, the balloon pops. And it's like, oh, mm. and then hang the banner <laughs> over the front. Like it's a shroud. Like, let's just cover that whole thing up. Nice. Right. And so like trying to, like, like we were saying, but like, yeah, early on, it was very much like I can bend the 60 penny nail because this was considered difficult, you know, and your ticket into like performing at a circus or a carnival, if you could bend a 60 penny nail, then you had a job, you know? Yeah. You are you're considered a strong man, and so we're gonna give that a whirl right now, right? Do the gotcha. Thing. Or or axe levering, like axe levering. Um, that's one of the the silliest, you know, silliest acts I do, which seems funny, right? Like that's that's a hard one to do. Yeah, I yeah. I don't think I don't think it translates. Like people don't realize how difficult a feat that. No, is. no way. Um, but but then I, it's like I I pretty much have them rolling their eyes at the end with the dumb stuff I say about it, and <laughs> yeah. then it's like all right, moving on, we can move on to something else. So it was, you know, short, quick, small feats, and then you know, adding in of course the the the, the blockhead and the other straight jacket right. and, and other other things. So it was a good mix. Um, Did you have any experience like hosting other stuff, or no, you just jump right into it? I just sort of jumped right in. Uh, wow. Yeah, and it's it's you know, I mean it's like it's kinda like this stuff, right? Like you you get better, you make mistakes, you get you, you figure out how you can be more inclusive or you can be um more aware 
of, of the things you're saying, or, or you can be, you can, you start reading a room and you start picking up on things that you can use. And, you know, I mean, it, it's a weird thing because it's really hard to practice hosting. Yeah. Like you and I can like work on, on grade eights all day because that is the thing. We see the thing. We can work on the thing, but every crowd is different. Every room is different. Every show is different. So it's like, you know, you just kind of like do the best you can on that one. And maybe you pick up a few things you can carry with you to the next one. Definitely. And, and now when you're starting out implementing the strength stuff, how did yeah. you avoid it becoming like, I guess the word, like maybe adversarial is, is the word, right? Like how, how did you stay away from being like, look how strong I am, you weakling, right. well, <laughs> you know, like. Yeah, no, that's, and that's a good point. Um, I, it's a very good question. I, what I ended up doing was like, all right, like, so back in the days of the sideshow and the early days of the sideshow, you had men of strength and you, you had people doing these things. In fact, if you could bend a six to 10 nail, not unlike this one, then you would have a job for the summer. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to emulate that because I'd like to have a job for the summer. Let's see how it goes. Right. So it was like challenging myself to do the thing. Yeah. Like everyone knew, like, why would I bring it up there if I couldn't do the thing? Right. Yeah. Um, but it's yeah. like in a way, but yeah, I, I've, I've been on the other side of that. Like, you know, I mean, at a, at a whopping five foot six inches, I, I'm not, I'm not scaring anybody, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's not like I was six foot in train, <laughs> you know, it's like, I've never <laughs> been tall. So I, I get the idea of being, um, you know, bullied or pushed that, you know, pushed that. So I, I don't ever want to be in that position on the other side. Um, right. And I, and I really like the, the notion of like, we can do these things or like, like a, a show or a demonstration is a, is a we, it's inclusive. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it should, it should never be, I can do this. You can't. So, you know, F you or whatever. It's like, it's much more of a, it's like, I've really worked hard in this and, and the same kind of focus I'm using for this you have for the things you're doing and you have yeah. what you're doing and like we can accomplish great things and you can accomplish great things and that's that's really cool yeah the the empowering angle seems to be a good way to go about it um yeah and the uh the way of like not doing it makes me think of uh the the film bending steel with with chris yes. Ryder and, yes. and chris oh, chris God, Sheck. That, Oh, when man. he's trying it out in the bar and he's oh, like gosh, struggling. That, I, I, oh. like, I'm not a contortionist, but I, I pulled myself in a knot watching that. It was so uncomfortable. <laughs> you know, it was, it, yeah. Um, yeah. And I've talked to Chris about that, you know, I mean, because obviously I'm working with the same coach and, yeah. and I've, and then, like when I've gotten a new feet under my belt or something, you know, like, and uh, I'll, I'll look at him like, man, I can't wait to like tell people at a bar how much stronger I am. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> shake his head. I mean, it's, yeah, it's a joke. I'm not gonna do it. Yeah, but it's just like, but yeah, that is that is definitely, yeah, that is something. That is a yeah. Is that, that, that was a great to win friends or influence enemies. Yeah, it, it was a great scene, especially when they're watching the footage back and Chris Ryder's like, "Yeah, you can't be doing this." <laughs> yes. Yeah, and and it was not even yeah. like a you know. Sorry, I, my I just realized the computer was unplugged and I was about to oh, no drop problem. off here. Um, but. But yeah, like that was definitely, there was no like, <laughs> well, you can try that. This is like a, no, you are not doing that. Yeah, yeah that's why I'm really developing so much respect for what you guys do, because it's like, if you were to just tell me, like before knowing any of this stuff, it's like, convey to this this group of five people that you're stronger than them, like right. period. If you just gave me that task, likely I'd just be like, Oh, like, right. but you can't do it, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, and, and that's just seems to be setting yourself up for like a a bad show or the situation maybe where you hand the, hand some savage in the crowd the thing and he actually does it and then you got to deal with deal with that. Mike, Mike, right. Mike right. talked about that, right? Like right. Where, where he was passing it out and then like somebody forget where he said he was that actually could bend it and then he had to deal with the reaction of yeah. that too yeah. yeah and there's always a there's always a plan i mean you should always have a plan b or c or thing but like but like as a thing like one if a way of showing that that you're stronger than them is that you teach them and that you yeah. also accomplish something that they couldn't accomplish even five minutes before like yeah. that's a huge way of showing strength and one thing you know uh, I always talk about like if there's with with friends or things, it's like okay, that can be chatty if you were clearly finding out. Um, I, there's the standing on one foot version of something, right? Tell me everything I need to know while while I'm standing on one foot. 
because it, it limits the time that that we can talk about it right and okay. i think that as far as shows go an audience will always remember how you made them feel more so than what you did you know mm-hmm. like oh man yeah. that guy they always, uh, you know that guy that that singer of that first you know whatever it's like they were a lot of fun now will they remember every note will they remember that somehow like something fell over or like probably not they just remember having like a good feeling after they left the show right right and so and so because like there was something that was interesting i was talking to somebody and they're like oh that time you did blah 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 on that video and it's like i haven't done that i'm wanting to do it i'm wanting to get up to that point but i haven't done it yet but in their mind because i kept hitting personal best or doing that sort of thing like i was already at that point so yeah. like the, the 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 you know the witness right the witness can see things that aren't there or that sort of thing but they, they get a general feeling uh, of, of what kind of person you are what kind of thing and and yeah the, the the beating on my chest and kicking sand in someone's face like you know the charles atlas i think yeah it's not my style and i you know i don't i don't i don't i don't find it enjoyable to be for I, I don't i have that secondhand embarrassment for somebody if they are embarrassed right if they yeah I, and i i, I don't want to um but yeah, yeah i'd much rather empower or um I mean, like the one of the things that I did with the straight jacket is I've, I've added the arm shackles. You know, I'll put the my I'll put the jacket on, put the arms through. They get wrapped around, so I actually have to like pop that chain before I can get out of the rest of the jacket. Um, yeah. And what I like doing is I really like empowering the person, like putting me in the straight jacket, and particularly when they do that fifth strap. You know, like there's the there's the <laughs> bottom strap that it's like you know, and I. Let people know. I mean, is, I, have you ever had to like pants altered or, or things or a tailor where it's like sure. dress, dress left or dress right? You know, that's a yeah, <laughs> that's a real thing. You know, and and it's like so I let the audience know. It's like, well, apparently my volunteer has made sure that tonight I'm dressing left. Good to know. Yeah. Okay, you know, <laughs> it's funny and it's not. It's it's like, but but yeah, it's like I give them all the credit and I, you know, there and I'm really like, you know, and I'm trying to get it's like, man, you really. You really put me in this thing wow okay you know and yeah it's like i want to celebrate that they you know had the uh, like they're not performers or that they had the bravery to come on the stage and do the thing right um and also there's something i learned recently it's like why would you ever bring up a, uh, like why would you ever ask an audience to clap for a volunteer when you're not clapping for them like all right everyone cheer it's like well you should cheer for them too because they just that that was their part of the show they're, they're sure as much of it as you were yeah um, that makes sense but yeah yeah so i definitely that's the way i avoid adversarial either tell the story or yeah. or like we're, we're in this thing the audience is a we you and the audience are a we we're in it together let's have a fun thing happen let's yeah build something an experience that we didn't have before uh, right and that there's no and there's no reason i mean in comedy there's a thing known as punching up or punching down right yeah you know it's like in comedy you wouldn't say like oh nice wheelchair you know like uh, that's a terrible thing to say you know yeah um but you would say like politicians am i right you know like kind of a sure. thing because like politicians are always on everyone's list and they and they are a position of authority they, they feel like you're punching up and you're yeah. you're unified in like that that thing right definitely yeah yeah that makes total sense yeah. so what's been like what the best show that you can remember What's been your favorite performance so far? So there, I mean, I can remember bits of things like in that Southern Side show. Who anything? There's a there's a gentleman by the name of AJ. He is an old time carny. I mean, through and through, he, he tells a story of how he was working with his father in, in Minnesota, and it's you have to think like old world accent. So like, I'm working with my father. I'm in Minnesota. We have this thing set up, you know, and it's this whole thing. <laughs> yeah. And he says that you know that they his father worked on the like he throws a baseball or the softball at the milk bottles. Yeah. And it's like, and so he, he set up this thing, we're doing this, and this tornado hit the circus, like hit the hit the carnival. And he's like, and I mean to tell you, those milk bottles didn't move an inch. And it's, it's <laughs> funny, because it's like, yeah, yeah, we all know that still. You know, it, it's funny. But yeah, uh, so I'm, I'm doing a thing, and I, I do a card trick with the, with the, with the card chair involved. And, um, and it's like, oh, I can't find it. And so I have to do these things. So I can't find your card. And all that. So at one point, I, I asked for uh, well, I'll tell you, I'll go for half credit, like a like a book report that is late. You're only going to get half credit. So I was like, I, I yeah. know I didn't find it, but maybe I can get half credit. And so I rip the deck of cards, and everyone's really quiet. And in <laughs> in the you know which performers love quiet, 
really gives them a chance to regain their thoughts and take stock of the situation because silence is awesome. <laughs> but, uh, but so in the silence, all of a sudden I hear, that's not easy to do. <laughs> like AJ was like, I just watched the kid rip cards. You guys should be cheering for this is what he's thinking. Like that's not easy to do. And everyone laughed and then started cheering. And then that kicked up the rest of the act. So that was, oh, nice. that was pretty wonderful. Or, um, there was a, a point of which, um, like I hadn't, I hadn't been able to do this. And then I finally did sort of just out in general, like I worked at a haunted attraction, you know, I'd stand outside and do sideshow stuff and do yeah. some strength stuff and bring people over. But it was the, it was blowing up the, the water bottle. Okay. And it finally went and there might've been like eight people, but all of a sudden it just was like bang. And it was like in this sort of a walking mall. So there were a lot of buildings. So it was a really loud bang. And and then all of a sudden people turn and like they're like all different places, but they realize what just happened. They're like, woohoo! Like, it was like, <laughs> it was just like fine, I'll take it. I'll take my eight people applause. That's great, you know. But, yeah, that's fun. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to think if there was any. Uh, I mean, like the various the various who shows have been great. Uh, there have been uh, some online shows that have gone really well, or like some nice. trimming down that card trick to make it work. I mean, I did a show in Toronto. Um, where it was the Something Strange Festival. And okay. uh, what was really interesting <laughs> is that I had I had like a pillowcase over my head. I, I was going to be like let out in the in the straight jacket with the things. And they're like, we knocked your cards over. Is that a problem? And it's like, <laughs> like I can fix it. Like I am completely, <laughs> you know? And my friend yeah. who was there was like, wait, Todd, yeah, I, I think I can fix it for you. And I was like, I told him, all right, like this is what you need to do. He did the thing. Um, but it went really well. Like there was a uh, uh, did like all the all the beats worked like the way they're supposed yeah. to, which is always nice. Um, and then yeah. uh, the the sideshow stuff worked as well. Like I do a mousetrap on my tongue. Um, oh wow! And it was like, and there was a kid that did it before, but like he put this mouth guard in, right? And then it was like this is like what I'm talking about using the room or what happened. And I said, look, you've seen the mousetrap on a tongue before tonight. And it's a really difficult, it's not a difficult thing, but it's a really potentially dangerous thing. And he used a mouth guard, which I, he's a smarter man than I, but I'm gonna make this <laughs> more extreme because I'm American and we have a shitty health plan. Here we go, right? And like, and all the Canadians are like, oh, it's funny because it's true. <laughs> you know? Yeah, um, nice. So like those kinds of things, yeah. Yeah. There's been yeah. a lot of moments and shows that, that have been really great. That's cool, that's cool. All right. So we're going to start wrapping up. I, at the end, I do a rapid fire series of questions. Bring so it. it's going to be favorite thing to bend. We're, we're talking material here. Um, right now. Um, I mean, I think for me, it's always like the, the newest, the newest achievement. So like right now, as much as it, as it hurts the schnoz, I, I'm really digging the, the half inch round. Nice. Um, cool. Yeah. And then the, so the five eights, the five eights shoe, like the five eights horseshoe. Just, okay. Look, it's just flat. It's gray. There's no yeah. really decoration and it's just nasty and it feels great to actually knock it out. <laughs> uh, hardest thing to bend for you, material wise. Right now we're looking at the the grade eights. Um, you know, just putting a slight wobble in them. You know, grade eight. Yeah. Um, and it's like, and that's frustrating. I hate it because it's like it's just right there. You know. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's like stealing my lunch. It's like running up my credit card bills. <laughs> like it's just aggravating me on every level. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, strongest bending style for you? Uh, double overhand, without a doubt. Okay. Um, double overhand, you know, tucking it under. Yeah. Uh, I think it's gonna get to a point where people are gonna accuse me of bending it with my beard because it just goes. Up yeah. Up, you know? <laughs> uh, weakest bending style? Do you play with the other styles that I all have? Uh, double underhand is is not particularly strong, and then also okay. uh, uh, Rever reverse. Yeah, those aren't the, it's brutal. But, it's brutal and I just haven't done them enough. Like I do the I do that when I want to make a, an S bend in the carriage bowl. Like that's about the yeah. only time I'm I'm doing it, but um, yeah. to get that little one started. But yeah. Uh something outside of uh strength bending, this whole world that we're talking about that you enjoy doing. Playing ukulele of all things. Oh right on, cool. Yeah, and in fact a lot of the videos that I make, I I I'll play the soundtrack. Um and it's oh nice. And I think it's one of those you know, you don't expect it to be, but it actually is a, um, it's, it's a nice workout, right? Like you, you do these <laughs> big motor skills and then all of a sudden the small yeah. motor skills keeps it all limber. 
So yeah, that makes sense. All right, what's uh, what's the one feat that's gotten away so far? Something that you've attempted and you haven't been able to complete? The grade eight or something else? Grade eight, uh, grade eight for sure. Uh, I'm I'm trying to close in on on two decks, uh, ripping oh, nice. simultaneously. Um, I mean, there's the ever elusive red nail you know, that's coming. Um, yeah. But the uh, but yeah, I mean, I think it's always it, there isn't like a feat because I think everything is stair stepped, right? Like it's a double. Yeah. Level. So it's like I can bend sixty and I can bend a pro fit sixty, but like what's the but I can't quite get the red nail yet. So like short bending, yeah, you know, has its has its things or um, routinely ripping through bicycles is not quite there yet. You know that nice. one's a little uglier. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Who's the strongest person that you know? This is open ended. This could just be like your yeah. grandpa or something like that, or it could well, be some I mean, somebody we all know. You know what? We'll do it. We'll do it this way. Just because yesterday was her birthday, it's my mom. Uh, she nice. A, uh, she is one of those that that can stretch a dollar, can make things work. Uh, always provided. Uh, you know, uh, found herself in a bad situation when when I was around. Remarried my stepdad when I was two, and has just uh, she's like a a tough as nails. You know, she goes as an example. We you go into a hardware store. And you need six things on your list and you're not sure yeah. where they are. So you have your one person that helps you and they would help you find all six things. My mother uh -huh. would walk in the hardware, see six people standing around. And she's like, okay, you go help me find this. You help me find this. You help me <laughs> find this. And like, and she takes over, you know, and it's, nice. and it's, it's pretty great. So, so yeah, I would have to say, and you know, a lot of things she's accomplished, uh, you know, she's not a, she never went to college. She didn't, yeah. you know, but, but like, mainly through tenacity she she got you know she's put herself in a good place and put our family in a good place and, and loves my dad and loves me and is supportive and and yeah that's more than that you know that's great yeah a couple of people have said their mom that's cool yeah it was it's actually my wife's birthday yesterday too oh check that out yeah <laughs> look out for the pisces yeah all right uh best piece of advice you're ever given this could be about strength stuff or life in general uh I think, well, I think we touched on it a little bit, but like the, you know, people are going to remember how you make them feel more so than what you yeah. did and what's that's a good one. That, that, that's a good one. Um, but, you know, the, the simplest thing is don't be an asshole. <laughs> you know, like you, you, you can make choices and you can, you, you uh, I mean, it's like sometimes, yes, you want the last piece of pizza, but if like, if somebody's really hungry, just give them the last piece of pizza, there'll be, there'll be more. Like, yeah. there's no reason for you to like, elbow your way through you know and you you and you by being kind or by being you feel better and then things come back to you in some ways so don't be an asshole totally yeah it's great advice <laughs> <laughs> all right funniest reaction a person has had when they find out you spend your time bending nails um ooh, that's a good one let me think about that one for a second um the um Reaction. I mean, I guess it could just be in general when people find out what you do. Yeah, well, <laughs> just uh, yeah. doesn't right. have to I mean, be the bending. Somebody asked me one time. They asked me why it was that I walked on so much glass because I'll, I'll do glass walking as well, which is a weird question oh, wow. because they're like, usually it's like, does it is it real glass? <laughs> yes. Uh, does it hurt? Yeah. Um, you know, and you know, because like there are times where my foot bleeds and all that. And it's like uh -huh. I always chalk that up like, oh man, that one really hurt. I guess it was a double pane window. <laughs> but like um but they'll say something but this one was like why is it so much class and i told her i came up with a really beautiful lie which is always fun i said you know yeah as a young man in my 20s i i dated around a lot and dated this one girl in particular and it was great until it wasn't and i took her picture and i threw it down and i stomped on it you know, it was a picture i had in my dining room we eat together even when we couldn't eat together it was very romantic <laughs> but that one and then in my 30s i was married and 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 then that didn't go well. So all the bridesmaids' photos, all the groomsmen's photos, all of that, it, it went into the pile, right? And then now that I find myself in my 40s, just walk around on glass trying to feel anything. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and like her reaction was like I punched her in the gut. She was just like, and, <laughs> and was like I was like, she was like, oh my gosh, do you need a hug? I was like, no. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, I am divorced and things haven't been great all the time. But no, it's I'm, I'm kind of kidding. And, and yeah. She's like, Oh, and I was like, do you need a hug? And she's like, I might. So like we hugged it out and it was a very funny. Oh, funny. Yeah. That's pretty good. But yeah. I mean, in terms of the strength though, I think 
you know, because like what we were talking about, like I'm not being like, let me slide through the door sideways because my physique is so good. So I think, right. I think just like when I do like the, the you know, 48 inch flat bar, there we go. That's the funniest one. I was in a uh, thing called Dr. Sketches, um, which is a drawing. People will get to watch these burlesque shows and draw the performers. And so I, I had the, the over one shoulder leopard print. Yeah, nice. it's kind of Mighty Adam era costume. Yeah. Oh, okay, strong man. I get it. <laughs> and then for these like quick poses, I just basically bent the thing over and then went through the whole series of doing the double, double scroll. And yeah, then once nice. that was done, I'm holding it up and I'm like, you know, looking at it like it's a mirror because it's this perfect round thing. But like yeah. everyone's like, there was a, a an actual audible like <gasps> when I took the steel and bent it over my leg. They probably felt nice. like I was just going to hold it this way and like hold steel, you know, like not do anything with it. But sure. the fact that it twisted and then I like just dropped it on the stage and it was like, like clunk, clunk, clunk of metal. People were just like, whoa. Like nice. it, it was like very much like time drawing. And they're like, oh crap, time drawing. I got to do the thing. So that was cool. Nice. All right. In closing, who's someone yeah. you'd like to see me have on the show? Um, if you've not had uh, Coach Ryder, that would be that would be great. Obviously, um, um, if, let's see. I have not. Um, I got it. I put I, in I, a good word had, for me there. <laughs> I, I assume you've had Don Cummings on the show. Yep. yep. Yeah, I, I met Don um, at one of the uh, at a at a picnic of sorts where I met Slim and and various. Oh, people. right on. Cool. Uh, and that was cool. Um, you know who would also be interesting is Uncle Mike. Do you know Uncle Mike? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think it would. I I think you'd be interesting in terms of like working with. Uh, you know Dennis Rogers and and knowing Slim and and I, it, would be, it would be a really interesting kind of history or his perspective as being like a septuagenarian doing this stuff. For sure. Us young guys, right? You know, like it makes sense, and we'll and we get so con- caught up and like, oh man, I, I did that grade eight today, and I man totally crushed that grade five. But right. the fact that he's like putting a nail through through lumber at seventy, I mean, there's it's unbelievable, and it's and it's like. Not only is it, I mean, it's unbelievable on, on that level. It's fantastic, but it's also like, if you're not rooting for the guy, then you really need to check your soul. You know, like sure, yeah. That's that's the absolute opposite of the let me show you how strong I am adversarial. Yeah. That's like, come on, like let's see you do it. I want to, I, I want to be in an audience. I want to watch Mike trot out and drive a nail through the thing, and and I will be up and out of my chair and clapping so fast, it'll be crazy. Definitely, yeah, that's a good one. I got to reach out to him. Yeah. All right. Uh, tips and advice for beginners, let's say benders, and uh, if there's guys out there that want to go down the performing road, so tips um, and yeah. advice for performing. Right. So the the benders, beginning benders, be patient with yourself. Like you're going to have a lot of gains early, and those gains are going to slow, right? Like the the the. I mean, where you might your technique will improve, but the resistance of materials becomes more, you know. To go from a quarter inch bolt to uh, to a, uh, a timber tie, it's not a huge jump in in resistance. Yeah. Right. And all of a sudden you have two materials you can bend. Man, I'm a bender because I can bend these two things. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but then all of a sudden, like when you're talking the burrito bolts or the red nail or you know going from the red nail to the gold nail or the yellow nail to the red nail, like those are huge jumps. Oh yeah. Um, and so like to be patient uh, and and uh, work on work on your technique and 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 believe it will fall because it will like even if it's just isometrics yeah you know like it's going to bend a little bit and every time you you hit that thing you know it's like you're 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 adapting your muscles you're telling you're giving your muscles a signal like this needs to happen and and so like be be patient with the process trust the process as far as vendors go and with performers is like find your voice like who are you as a person and and would you like to hang out with that person on stage? Would you like to meet yeah. that person? You know, um, I mean, like I I don't I don't like to hang out. Like I was in a chat the other night where there was two people who were writers, and they were almost like, well, like how long's your book? Well, how long's your book? And so I just pulled, <laughs> I, I reached over and I pulled out a tape measure and I said, save yourself some time, <laughs> because it was silly, right? You know, it's yeah. like it doesn't even matter what the books are about. Are you just talking about number of pages? Like that's that's crazy. Um, yeah but and, and it's like that and it's like i don't i clearly don't enjoy that so i wouldn't be that performer right yeah it's like this piece of steel is really difficult and they're like okay that sounds like steel and 
Yeah, I think there was one video where I put like a magnet. It's like, yes, it's steel, and yes, it's 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 real, right? And plunk, put the magnet on the on the nail, and then bent the nail. You know. Uh -huh. Um. So it's convincing thing, but um, but like they don't care if it's like a you know a show sixty or a profit sixty uh, yeah. or something. They, right. They, they, they just they just like to see you know it's the monster truck thing. They just like to see cars being smashed. You know. That's it. <laughs> but yeah, so like find your voice, find find the person that be the person that you would be your best self like who you'd want to meet right yeah and and um and and put that out there you know um if you are interested in what you're doing then the audience will be interested yeah it's, there's yeah. a difference between being interesting and being interested like oh i'm so interesting watch me do this thing well they're interested right. or not. But all of a sudden if you're like trying to figure out the thing and flexibility doesn't go that way and you do this all of a sudden ah and you get it <laughs> Then you they they get the your interest is infectious, right? So. Yeah, totally. All right, where can people find you on social media? And, yes. uh, if you they have a website, Hot Todd Lincoln. Mainly right now, uh, Instagram. I'm, I'm sort of in the rebuilding of a website thing, but uh, Hot Todd Lincoln on on Instagram is a, is I, I post a lot of these uh, the COVID nineteen capers as I refer to them. Um, nice on there and and other strength things. Also, you know uh, the uh, notes from class. Uh, I'll do photographs of, you know, the the various, you know, the pile of destruction that I've I've made that day. Uh, gotcha. And uh, but but yeah, so that's that's the main place, Instagram, and, and uh, yeah, that'll get you there. Right on. All right, that's it, man. Thanks so much for Thank being you. on the show. Okay. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thanks so much for having me. You too. We'll do it again someday. Maybe we'll have a couple performing performing guys on at once and uh, you oh, guys yeah. can we have a round table. That'd be great. That'd be yeah, great. yeah. Cool, man. All, All right. right, Todd. Have a good have night. Good you too. Bye-bye.